Hello everybody, and wow, that kind of failed. Let me try that one again. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are currently trying again to land this rover on Tylo. The last one kind of went boom a little bit, but that was entirely user error. That was all my own fault. So let's go ahead and before we do anything else, let's go check on our asteroid base. I want to see just how much mining it actually got done in that three years. So let's uh, take a quick look here. Looks like we are doing well on our power. Looks like it stopped mining at some point. Um, no, actually. It is still going. Uh-huh. Interesting. So, um, it is going, but it wasn't, I think. I think it wasn't going while we weren't here. It just restarted when we popped over. Well, that's a little annoying. In that case, we almost certainly aren't going to make the timer on the, on the contract. I mean, the mass of this thing is going down relatively quickly. Maybe if we just sat here and mined it out. Let me run a quick experiment. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we are able to mine it out very quickly like this. Look at that. This is how quickly it should have mined out. Look at that mass go down. Look at our Delta V go up. <laughs> That's what I love to see. So yeah, I think we just sit here and mine it out like this. Oh, why did it stop? Start the harvester. We're not full on ore. We're not full on liquid fuel. Start it back up. And we continue the warp. Okay. Let's just get this thing to position. Like so. I am noticing that this is going to hit zero resources well before it reaches zero percent. I'm kind of wondering what's going to go on with that. Um, of course, we do have full liquid fuel at this point. So the question then becomes, how can we get this thing in position to intercept Jewel? What happens if we set Jewel as target and do a home and transfer Yeah, I realize that we're not near circular, but this would theoretically work. And we have the Delta V to do it. I don't know about the Delta V to break once we get there. But, I mean, that should be theoretically possible. Okay, so what if we rotate to the node? Can we rotate this thing? Incredibly slowly. I'm going to quick save here in case anything goes horribly wrong. And I'm going to physics warp this. Oh my. That went horribly wrong. Our engine's detached. And we're just waggling around here. Okay, that's interesting, to be sure. I'm going to reload that. And let's see here, this should be your 98, day 288, 2 hours, 13 minutes. Yep, that is correct. Okay, so we cannot do that with the physics warp. So the question is, how do we go about rotating this thing? 
How do we go about spinning this base? And I don't know the answer to that question. Well, let's go ahead and fly this thing. So we were able to mine it out-ish. We were able to mine out a significant percentage of it. But the question now becomes, how do we get this thing rotated over to the node in a quasi-timely fashion, or even a fashion at all? Now, we are, I believe, controlling from the asteroid itself. However, we should maybe be controlling from this advanced grabbing unit. Control from here. And go to the node. And the question then becomes, how long will it take us to turn there? Also, node in T minus 42 years? Lol. <laughs> that, um... That's going to be a lengthy wait. And this thing doesn't seem to be turning in... Oh? It is actually turning. Look at that. Just extremely slowly. But that's actually workable. I like how we're showing negative delta V. That's nice. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be controlling from this guy here, specifically, and um, we are controlling from this advanced grabbing unit right now. I would like to control from the RC001S remote guidance unit right here. So we are able to turn this thing now. So that's interesting. The next question I have is, if we start pushing this, how horribly does the physics react? And I don't know the answer to that question. But we are basically aligned here. So I guess let's find out. Okay, that was a very small amount of push there. And obviously, we're filling our tank as we push and increasing our thrust to weight. See? So there is that. Okay, so what happens if we remove all nodes, home and transfer to target, create node, still 42 years? Okay, can we get a faster but maybe not as efficient home and transfer? Let's find out. I mean, target position at closest approach would be there. If we were to burn here in 66 days and go a bit retrograde. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing we run into. We're just kind of on the opposite side of the solar system right now. Yep. So it does need phasing orbits. I don't know about 40 years of phasing orbits. So what if instead we were to intercept a target? I, I don't... This is going to be a lot of delta V. This is going to be a stupid amount. Yeah. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> So what I want to do is I do want to home and transfer to target. One thing we could try to do, actually, is circularize our orbit. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's think about a circularization at the next apoapsis. 442.7 meters per second. Now that's not that bad. We have enough on hand for that. Now, is there enough resources in the asteroid to replenish our delta v i don't know maybe is the answer but let's go ahead and do that i think let's rotate to the node and let's execute it 
I would very much like to try that. Now, another thing we could always do is we could run a refueling mission. We could set up some sort of a refueling logistics system. And that's something I would probably do if this was going to be a useful thing in the jewel system. I'd probably set up a, a fueling station on the surface of BOP and just be able to very, very easily hop up and down. However, as of right now, I'm more interested in just seeing how pushing this thing around works, seeing what happens, because the resources are at 408 percent, or 408 tons, yeah? So there's 408 tons of resources here, but then what is this 81.026%? That kept declining, but by the time this reaches zero, 81.06% will not reach zero. Now, another thing we could do is cancel this time warp. Like, abort this node execution for right now. This is going to be in 3 years, 384 days. So, let's keep that scheduled. And then, let's head on back and let's work on our Tylo lander for right now. We know we've got, like, 4 years, and we know it takes less than 4 years to get there. So, we should be able to, to run this while waiting for that. So let's go ahead and use our Geraldo Mark II. Um, Geraldo Mark II, there we go. And we are just going to head out to the Jewel system. And once we get there, then we will... Well, I'll, I'll just keep an eye on the mission elapsed time, and that will let me know. Okay, so... We are targeting Jewel as it is right now, so let's go ahead and do a quick home and transfer. Create the node. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. We are going to be going the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and adjust this. It will require some adjustment. And let's go in this way. There we go. I like that a lot. Oh, that was a little too far. Ah! No! No, come back! Come back! There you are. Okay. Come on back this way. Excellent. Perfect. Yep, that'll do. Execute that node. That is a lot of Delta V. Okay, let's uh, try a different one. Let's create the home and transfer. And I want to burn retrograde that is to say i want to use less delta v to get there i think i completely messed it up but let's go ahead and do yeah something like that that is so much less delta v so i think what happened was i overcompensated with the scroll wheel and there we go execute that node that's exactly what i'm looking for that's a lot less delta v and also it will be less delta v for breaking which is good. So let's go ahead and do this. We are 36 days in right now. It'll be 81 days until this burn. And that'll be fine. We'll just have to make sure that no more than about three and a half years go by. Because I do not want to miss that apoapsis. That is for sure. Now, about the contract completion. If we don't get there in time, that's fine. I'm more doing this just to find out how exactly the asteroid mining works, how exactly the asteroid bases work, and I've learned a lot about it, which is good. But we're going to have this home and transfer burn momentarily, which will be right about now, actually. Go ahead and burn, Mechjeb. Like, seriously, you're going to burn out this stage real fast. Go ahead and burn now. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we've got about 30 seconds in our core stage here, and then our interplanetary transfer stage will kick in. We've got plenty of Delta V to make this all work, theoretically. And let's go ahead and stage this as soon as we've burned out all the Delta V we can, which will be right about in 10 seconds. So that would be then right about now. Okay, 
am also going to burn off our mono propellant. Get us there a little faster, get us a little delta V, get us a little more thrust to weight. Should all be good. And while we're at it, we might as well physics warp on up. There we go, that'll make everything go just a little bit faster. Four times faster, a little bit. <laughs> okay. So we are making good progress in this burn. Estimated burn time of nine minutes. We've been on this flight for 118 days. We've got plenty of time before our base needs its maneuver. And we're almost out of mono propellant, but we've been able to use our mono propellant to propel us quite a ways, really. And that also means we're utilizing less delta V out of the nuclear engine. Which, considering we dropped a tank off of the nuclear engine, is probably a good plan. We've still got plenty of gas to get there. Another thousand delta V. Let's do this. And we are coming in at the same kind of weird angle. Or a very similar kind of weird angle, anyway. But that's fine. We'll just home and transfer in, and just do pretty much the same thing, except, you know, less awfully. <laughs> <laughs> with less failure on my part. We'll put it that way. Five more minutes on this burn. That's fine. And the question then is, how long before we get here? Well, two years, 181 days, and two hours. So we'll have plenty of time. We'll have basically a year and a half once we get here. So yeah, this is definitely the right call. So once we get here, I'm, I'm going to start warping here as soon as this burn is completed, and we'll do our circularization. It'll all be fine. I'm just surprised at the fact that that mining operation wasn't apparently running while we weren't there, but yet you let it run for a couple of days warped, and we could basically mine out a Class E asteroid in a couple days. That seems weird with two Drillomatic Juniors. I don't know. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding the, what I'm reading there or something, but it seems odd to me. Okay, where are we? We should be getting into the system very, very soon. Right about now. There we are. Excellent. Okay, let's start warping to right here. And in the meantime, at this periapsis, let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice little retrograde burn. There we go. That'll be, you know, 1500 delta V. Get it down a little bit more. Yeah, that'll be pretty good. 1450 will be about right. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and now as soon as we get here, we will be able to execute that node. But that'll take a little bit of time to get here. I'm also going to go ahead and physics warp our turn. There we go. And we warp on in. We've got two years until we get there. But that's fine. Completely fine. Basically the same probe, but a bit smarter design fixed a few of the issues that were with the previous model, so that's pretty great. I'm sorry, but that doesn't look like the orbit of Kerbin to me. Okay, I guess the Kerbal Space Center is currently crossing the orbit of Dress. <laughs> that's a little weird. Of course, it's also almost across the orbit of Jewel. Very strange. I have no idea. I cannot explain that. And the Jewel base is, of course, heading very slowly towards its apoapsis. And when we're trying to do orbital mechanics up here, that's another reason, actually, to have our to have our asteroid base be much closer to the sun, because then orbits are much faster. If we need to do a phasing orbit, it doesn't take anywhere near as long. So that's probably a good idea in the future for asteroid bases. 
I do really like asteroid bases. You don't have to bother with like docking ports and such. You just clamp right onto the asteroid. I like it a lot. You can harvest fuel from it. It's pretty cool. But realistically, grabbing it out in jewel orbit was a mistake. If I had to do it over again, I would grab, like, for example, one of these guys. There'd be a Class E around here somewhere, I'm sure. In fact, I know there is. We've seen Class E's around Kerbin before. So, it would have been fine. Well, we've got another 400 days to go here. We will be there very shortly, and once we get here... I am going to pop over to the base just to see how long is left after we've completed our circularization burn, just to see how long we actually have to land this thing, and determine whether we want to land this first or perform that burn first, the circularization burn. So we'll find that out here in, you know, about 270 days, thereabouts. That won't be too bad. All things considered, this probe is a far superior one. We have basically the same amount, well we have less Delta V going into the system, but we should have plenty to get done what we need to get done, especially now that we've got 2.1 kilometers per second out of the Sky Crane. That thing can just about land itself from, from a low orbit. So that's good, but we'll have plenty of Delta V. Like, we'll have 3,000 meters per second or so to burn off. I'll probably start at a higher orbit, too. I didn't really like the 50 kilometers with the thrust to weight that I had. It just did not feel great. So I think we'll probably target somewhere closer to 100 kilometers. Just so that we have additional time to burn off our nuclear engine. And that'll be perfect. And here we come for our breaking, our breaking burn. Fantastic. Get over here, science here and now window. There you go. Excellent. And yeah, we've definitely got slightly better thrust to weight. So this will go a bit faster as well. 1450 meters per second. Let's do this. Also about a minute less on this burn. So that's pretty great. I am much happier with this design so far. Hopefully it performs better on the actual landing, because the last one didn't perform on the landing at all. It would have been fine, I think, if it hadn't have been for the off-center engines. If those hadn't have been there, ugh, it would have been much better. I think we probably could have landed it. Maybe. Now that I think about it, weren't we like 200 delta V off because I came in too high or rather too low? Yeah, we were like 200 delta V off. I don't think I could have landed that unless I had come in higher and had the engines be better centered. But we are currently elapsed a little over well, about two and a half years. So... We are going to actually have about a year and a half. I can guarantee that. So I don't think we actually have to go and stop the... Or go check on the... Uh, on the asteroid base. I think we're completely fine to just do this landing. I mean, realistically, this landing isn't going to take more than... What, a couple hundred days tops if we have to do phasing? It's certainly not going to take a full year. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get braked in here. And as soon as we are braked, I am going to do an inclination change, I think. It was super cheap last time, so I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and do a match planes with target. And this burn will be done in a few seconds. There we go. Very, very shortly now. 100 meters per second more. We're up to 0.41 thrust to weight. I like to see that over Jewel. like that a lot. There we go. And now let's go ahead and set Tylo as our target. That was Bop. Hang on. Tylo is our target. 
There we go. 1.5 degrees. We will go ahead and say at the next descending node, create and execute. 51.2 meters per second. This is almost identical to when we came in last time. That's pretty cool. I am A-OK -okay with that. Node in T minus one day. So also identically with last time, we are starting to go over with this mission. So after we successfully complete this inclination change, I'm going to put a cut in. And next episode, we will actually land this thing on Tylo. It is not going to go poorly. I think. <laughs> I hope. I wish. <laughs> it's not going to go as poorly as when we failed like three times in a row to put one on Duna. I'll put it that way. Okay. So there's our inclination burn done. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here. And next episode, we will land this thing on Tylo. See you all then.